Okay, so I'm going to record this. This is going to be an uh, explanation on a couple of questions from each of the worksheets that we have uh, this week. And on this worksheet, I'm asking for you to look at the parabola and to write the vertex form equation of the parabola. Okay, so uh, let's take a look at, I can look at any of these. Let's take a look at this one. This one's the easiest one. Because when we write the equation, obviously we want y equals a parenthesis x minus h close parenthesis squared plus k. So when we look at the a value, is this going to be a positive a or a negative a? Negative. Obviously a negative a. Now if it were negative 1, then we would have the pattern 1 over 1 down, back to the vertex 2 over 4 down. Do we have that pattern? Yes, we do, right? Check it out. 1, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4. So it does have that pattern. So we know that the A value is negative 1. So we also know the vertex here. That vertex is 2 on the X, uh, 1 on the Y. So if I, or negative 1 on the Y, if I wanted to, 2 on the x, negative 1 on the y. Now I know my h and k value. So I could actually write my equation right now because I know that the a value is negative 1 because it goes 1 over 1 down, 2 over 4 down. So let's start writing our equation. That's the first thing they ask for. y equals negative 1. You don't even need the negative 1. You could just put negative. So let me do that. Just negative. Open up some parentheses. x minus h, so that's x minus the h value, which is 2, close parentheses squared, plus k, plus negative 1. So I might as well write down minus 1 instead of plus negative 1, so just minus 1. There's our vertex form equation. Everybody cool with that? Mm -hmm. Okay, so we need to be able to do that for all of these. And then uh, up on the instructions, it says to then after that, also state your axis of symmetry. That's this vertical line. And that vertical line is the equation x equals simply the x value of your vertex, which is 2. x equals h. Okay. And I'll tell you this. On the quiz, I will ask you to type in the axis of symmetry equation. And if you just type in 2, that's going to be incorrect because 2 is just a number. It's the equation x equals 2 that produces the vertical line through that vertex x value of 2. Anyway, what else does it ask on the instructions on this worksheet? It says also to find your y-intercept. That's an interesting one right there. Y-intercept. Do you guys remember in Algebra 1 how to find the y-intercept? Anybody? Anybody? How do you find the y-intercept? I mean, it's one thing to visually see it. Like right here, you could visually see that it crosses at negative 5, right? So that's your answer negative 5. I mean, you could also write that as a coordinate 0, negative 5. But an important fact about finding the y-intercept from Algebra 1, if you cannot see it, like let's say your parabola, let's say we're opening down over here, and you don't get to see where it crosses, but we're opening down over here, um, you would have to, in case you forgot, from Algebra 1, set y, or no, set x equal to 0. So for the y-intercepts, if you don't see it visually, you're going to have to set x equal to 0 and solve. For the x-intercepts, you would set y equal to 0 and solve. Anyways, we'll get to some of those in a bit. Uh, the fourth and final thing that they randomly ask for on the instructions here is to state the range. The range are your up and down values, your y values. And clearly, it's y is less than or equal to, because it's opening down the y value of your vertex, which is negative 1. So we have to answer those four things um, just because they ask us those four things um, on each of these, OK? So this one was probably the easiest one because the A value is negative 1. You could see the pattern 1, 1, 2, 4, 3, 9. You can't see it, but you could assume that it's there. Let's take a look at a different one over here. So let's just jump to number, I don't know. Which one do you guys want to do? 1, 2, 3, 4, pick one. 9. Nine. 10. Okay, 10. That's a good one. So 
we know what parabolas look like. Y equals A, parentheses X minus H, close parentheses squared plus K. Now, what is the A value? Is the A value positive or negative? Positive, because opening up. Now, if the A value were positive one, from the vertex, you would go one over one up, right? But notice, it doesn't go one over one up. It goes one over, and how much? Five up. So that's five times as much as the one. Okay, that means that your A value is not one, it's actually five, okay? So we know that the A value is five. I mean, it'd be better if I could count the next one instead of two four, it'd be 220, but I can't verify that right there. But just based off of these three points, instead of one one, it's one five. So I could uh, assume that the A value is five. Now, what about that vertex? The vertex right here, I wanna write it up here, vertex negative three, negative four. And that's your H and K. So now we could write the whole thing in vertex form. So we have, and this is the answer to the first uh, question, what's the equation in vertex form? Y equals five, open parentheses, X. Now I need to write it as minus H. So that's gonna be a minus negative three. So that's gonna end up being a plus three, right? Close parentheses squared plus k, that's going to be a plus negative 4. I might as well just write minus 4. Cool? All right. Now, moving on to number 2. The second thing they asked for up on the instructions is to state the axis of symmetry. That's the vertical line crossing right through the x value of the vertex. x equals negative 3. Nice and simple. Uh, the third thing they ask you for is the y-intercept. <clears throat> this is where it gets a little fun. Um, you cannot see where this crosses the y-axis. We could assume it's going to be way the heck up here somewhere, like maybe in the 20s or 30s, I don't know. But it's going to be way off this graph. So we need to algebraically find out what that y-intercept is. And in Algebra 1, we learned to find the y-intercept. You set x equal to 0 and solve. Um, or you could even think of it as a function, like in the sense, let's say this were named g of x. This is representing all the answers to g of x. If I asked you, what is g of negative 2? g of negative 2 is positive 1. Does that make sense? If I say, what's g of negative 3? Oh, that's negative 4, right? So you could see your inputs and outputs right here. So if I wanted the y-intercept, that's at the x value of 0. That just reaffirms what we learned in Algebra 1, that to find the y-intercept, you set x equal to 0 and solve. So we need to set x equal to 0, solve, and we'll know what the y value is, which is going to be way up there off the graph. Now, it's pretty easy to set x equal to 0 and solve. I want to do this in my head right here. Hopefully, you guys verify. If I plug in a 0 right there, you know what? How about let's write down these notes right here. Set x equal to 0. Okay, let's put that in a little cloud because that's what we need to do to find the y-intercept. So you plug in 0 right there. Check this out. What is 0 plus 3? 3. What's 3 squared? What's 9 times 5? What is 45 take away 4? 41. So the y-intercept, the y-intercept is at 41. Pretty crazy, right? Like, where is it going to cross? It's going to cross way, not at 5, but way up there at 41. And last but not least, what is the uh, y, in no, not the y-intercept, the uh, range? The range, this is number four on the instructions, that's y is greater than or equal to the y value of the vertex, which is negative four. Everything is at negative four on the y or above. So I hope we're starting to get this. Um, let's go for one that is pretty wide. I don't know, pick one, one that's wide. 12, eight, uh, eight's good, 12's good. Four is good. Let's go with 12. Let's see what happens here. All right. So is our A value positive or negative? negative. Definitely negative. Now, if it were negative 1 from the vertex, you would go 1 over and 1 down, right? Right here, you're not going 1 over and 1 down. You're not even going 1 over and then halfway down. It's actually less than half. It looks like half of the half. So what would this be? 1 fourth. Does that make sense? So instead of one over one down, it's look like, it looks like one over one fourth of the way down. 
Okay, now you could even verify on the next one. Normally it would be two over four down, but if it's one fourth, divide four by four, it does give you that one down, if that makes sense, right? But right here, one over one fourth of the way down, you could conclude that your A value is negative one fourth. <clears throat> and now our vertex, I'm just gonna write it up here. You know, you don't, they don't ask you to write the vertex, but the vertex is two negative one. And now we know our H and K. Now we could write our entire vertex form equation. That's the first thing they asked for. Y equals negative one fourth, open parenthesis, X minus H, that's a minus, the H value is two, close parenthesis squared plus K. So that would be uh, plus negative one, but instead of plus negative one, I'm just gonna write it as uh, minus one. And there's your vertex form equation of this wider parabola. And it's important that we understand that the A value, if it's a fraction less than one, it does cause a vertical compression, which makes it wider. If the A value is a number that's bigger than one, like two or three, that's gonna cause a vertical stretch that makes it narrower. Anyway, that's uh, the first thing they asked for. The second thing they asked for is the axis of symmetry, which is simply X equals two. The third thing they asked for is the y-intercept. How do we do that? We set x equal to zero and solve. But why would we do the algebra if we could already see the y-intercept, whoops, the y-intercept is right there at the answer negative two. Does that make sense? The y-intercept, it crosses right there at negative two. So the y-intercept is negative two. And last but not least, the range that's y is less than or equal to the y value of your vertex, which is negative one. After doing this so many times, you'll be able to see that the axis of symmetry comes from x equals the x, x value of the vertex, and the range always involves the y value of the vertex. So I'm pretty sure that you guys could work on all of these, and you have the answers on Google Classroom, so you could verify all of these four different questions that they ask for each of these. Uh, the ones that I find interesting are the y-intercepts. Like, it's really easy. The y-intercept right there is two. The y-intercept right here is uh, five. The y-intercept right here is, well, that looks like one-fourth, right? So that's negative one and three-fourths, or negative 1.75, right? So the y-intercepts on many of these, you could visually see where it crosses the y-axis. But on some of these, like this one that we did, we actually had to do some algebra, plug in zero, do the math, that way we could see where it actually crosses the y-axis way at 41. You're gonna have to do that for this one right here as well. You can't see where it crosses, you could guess that it's somewhere down here, but you'd have to write the, the equation first and then set x equal to zero so you could find out where it crosses the y-axis. Same thing with these three at the bottom. You cannot see where it crosses the y-axis. So you have to come up with the equation and then set x equal to zero to be able to find the y-intercept. Same with this one and same with that one. So I think we're ready to rock right here with this and you'll be able to check your answers in Google Classroom. The answers are right here, but you could check them on Google Classroom. Right now, let's move to the other worksheet. So on this worksheet, we have more practice on graphing parabolas. Would anybody like to see one of these graphed or, or do you think we're good on this? Um, All right, you guys wanna see one that has a fraction in it for the A value or, I don't know, which one would you guys like to see? Yeah, let's do it the one with the fraction. Sure, why not? Okay, so uh, the first thing to graph a parabola, like always, is find that vertex. What's a vertex? Negative three, think opposite of what you see there. Take that for what it is. Negative three, positive four, right? Let's graph negative three, one, two, three, positive one, two, three, four. You get that dot right there. That is a vertex. Next thing to do is to draw your axis of symmetry, which is the vertical line going right through that vertex. It is the equation X equals the X value of your vertex, which is negative three. Now, normally we use the pattern one, one, two, four, three, nine. So I'm gonna write that down right here, one, one, two, four, three, nine. However, the A value is not one. 
We only use this pattern, 1, 1, 2, 4, 3, 9, if the A value is 1 or negative 1. But right here, we could clearly see that the A value, the A value here is 1 half or negative 1 half, right? Now, we need to modify the outputs of this pattern by multiplying by 1 half or negative 1 half. You don't have to multiply it by negative 1 half. You could just put a 1 half, a 1 half, and a 1 half. Now, why did I not put a negative? Because as long as I remember that it's opening down, that's all that matters, right? You could put a negative one half if you want, but you don't have to. So when we say one times one half, that is one half. When we go four times half, that is two. Half of four is two. Nine times half, what's half of nine dollars? That's four dollars and fifty cents, 4.5 or four and a half. So here's our new pattern. Again, remembering that the A value is negative one, you would say that it goes one to the right and halfway down. You go back to the vertex, two to the right, two down. Back to the vertex, three to the right, 4.5 down. And of course, I'm not graphing. I just wanted to say that before actually doing it. So now that we're at the vertex, now we could go one to the right and then halfway down, only halfway. So put a dot right there. Go back to the vertex and let's go two, two now, two to the right, two down and put a dot right there. Going back to the vertex, and now we're gonna do the last part of the pattern, three over, four and a half down. One, two, three over, 4.5 down. One, two, three, four, halfway. So you're right there, halfway down to a negative one on the Y. And you're gonna map these coordinates over to the other side of the axis of symmetry. So you have a dot right there at that halfway point. You have a nice coordinate right there, and you have the other one down here at that halfway point. We now have our parabolas. Well, I did, why did I say parabolas? We now have uh, our parabola. And of course, you could answer whatever else they ask. The domain, the domain to any absolute value function or any parabola is x equals all real numbers, the range. Y is obviously in this case less than or equal to the y value of the vertex, which is positive four in this case. Now for x-intercepts right now on these guys, let's just give an approximation. What does it look like? It looks like it crosses really close to the zero, but on the negative side. So I'm gonna say about negative 0 0.2. Negative 0 0.2. And it also crosses Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, s not quite six. So I'm gonna say about negative 5.8. These are just approximations. Later on, we will actually get specific values for x-intercepts, but for now, we'll just do approximations. Anyways, that looks like the hardest one on this worksheet. You could practice with these and check your answers on Google Classroom. Let's get to the really important part of today's lesson, transformations. If you flip that paper over, you're gonna see notes on transformations, examples, and then uh, six exercise questions, but apparently I don't know how to count because I went one, two, three, four, three, four. Sorry about that. Anyway, um, right here, here are the notes on transformations. Now, I hope we remember the very first type of parabola that we graphed. It was a parent graph with the vertex zero, zero. And what we're gonna be doing is describing how the parabola changes from the original parent graph with the vertex zero, zero to the new graph, whatever it may be, okay? So these are the three thoughts that you have to have, three questions you need to ask yourself, all right? So the first one always, does it get reflected over the x-axis, right? Now, first of all, let's describe what is a reflection over the x-axis. Well, your parent graph was at the origin and it goes one, one, two, four, three, nine, same in the other direction. So there's your parent graph. A reflection over the x-axis would just mean that it opens down, okay? So how do we determine if it opens down or up the A value, right? So the question here that you gotta ask yourself is, does it get reflected over the x-axis? If the A value is negative, then yes, it gets reflected over the x-axis. If it's positive, then you don't mention a reflection over the x-axis, okay? So after that, the question is, does it get vertically stretched or compressed? So what the heck does vertically stretched mean? If I take this red parabola and I vertically stretch it, I stretch out that red parabola, it's going to get narrower, okay? If I, if I take that red parabola 
and I compress it, I smash it, then it's going to get wider. Okay, so that's what I'm talking about, vertical stretch and compressions. Maybe this is all confusing. Uh, anyway, let's go back over here. So how do we know if it gets vertically stretched or compressed? If the A value is closer to zero, that's a fraction, less than one, then it's called a vertical compression. And that makes sense because if you multiply any number by a fraction less than one, it's going to shrink. What's 20 times half? It's 10. It got smaller, right? It got smashed in a sense. Now, when do you have a vertical stretch? If your A value is a value greater than one, like two or three, if it's further away from zero, greater than one, then it's a vertical stretch, okay, which makes it narrower. So these are things that we need to memorize, that we need to remember. Um, and finally, after deciding whether it stays open up or if it gets reflected over the x-axis and opens down, after deciding if you have a vertical stretch, if your A value is bigger than one, or vertical compression, if you have a fraction less than one, after that, you gotta decide whether you're shifting your parent graph to the left, to the right, according to H, but you gotta think opposite of what you see, and then up or down according to K. Now, this should all come naturally since we've been dealing with H and K on vertex, on our uh, vertex when we, when we graph. So, it sounds confusing, but it's not. So here's an example. Describe the transformations from f of x, that's the parent graph, to g of x. f of x is the parent graph, y equals x squared. g of x is this new one, negative 2, open parentheses, x minus 4, close parentheses, squared, minus 6. So let me zoom in on the g of x function. When we look at this equation, the very first thing we see is a negative sign. So that's the first thing that we state. What does a negative a value cause? A reflection over the x-axis. Yeah, what does that mean? It opens down. But mathematically, using the math vocab, you're going to see this, and you're going to say the first thing that happens is that the parent graph gets reflected over the x-axis. Now, after that, you look at the actual number of a. Yeah, yeah, it's negative, but what about that number? That's 2. Now, does the number 2 cause it to stretch or to compress? Stretch. So you're going to say, after saying it got reflected over the x-axis, you're going to say it gets vertically stretched by a factor of 2. Okay? Um, after all, if we were to modify the pattern, what do we do? We end up multiplying the outputs by 2, right? And that, that's what happens. It gets stretched by the factor of 2. Um, and then after that, the final thing to say, the third, thing, the third and final thing to say is that then it gets shifted 4 units to the right. Why to the right? That's a minus 4. Yeah, you got to think opposite, remember? So if it's a minus 4, it's going to shift 4 to the right. And you take k for what it is, 6 units where? Down. down, down, all right? So once again, the entire transformation that we need to write out is first, it gets reflected over the x-axis. And then after that, it gets vertically stretched by a factor of 2. And then after that, it shifts 4 to the right, because you think opposite, and 6 down, because you take it for what it is. That's the entire transformation that we need to actually be able to write down. Gets reflected over the x-axis. Gets vertic Why does it get reflected over the x-axis? Because of the negative sign. It gets vertically stretched by 2. It gets shifted 4 to the right, think opposite, and 6 units down, take it for what it is. Let's take a look at this one down here. You have your parent graph, f of x equals x squared, and they want you to change it to g of x. It kind of it wrote it over here. Sorry about that. So let's ask ourselves. What's the first thing that happens? Do we write down that it gets reflected over the x-axis? No, we don't. We move right on to the actual a value of 1 fourth. What does that cause? A vertical compression, all right? So the first thing to write down is it gets vertically compressed by 1 fourth. And then after that, what do I write? It shifts where? One to the left and zero up or down. So we, we just say it gets vertically compressed by one fourth and it shifts one to the left. And that's all the description is, that it gets vertically compressed by one fourth and it gets shifted one unit to the left. Now, let me actually give you a visual for that. Here's your parent graph. Here's a regular U-shaped curve. That's kind of ugly, sorry. Um, if it gets vertically compressed by one fourth, that means that it gets wider. And then after that, it gets shifted one unit to the left. So this vertex gets shifted over here one unit to the left, and you still have that pretty wide parabola right there. 
Does that make sense? I know that's ugly. Maybe it doesn't make too much sense. But down here, we have a bunch of uh, practice problems that we would like to do. What's the only thing we described for this first one? Why is it not? It's not zooming in. What's going on? What's the only thing we described for this first one? Shift two units to the left. Done. That's what we write. Shifts two units to the left. Ta-da. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Okay. Um, it didn't have a reflection. It didn't have a vertical stretch or a compression. It just shifts two units to the left. It doesn't even shift up or down because there is no K value. So there will be at least two of these questions on the test this Friday. Um, would you like to see any other one of these? Or are we good? Yes. The one that has an A value? OK. Um, which one would you like to see? A value of negative 1, A value of negative half, positive 2, or negative 2? Negative half. OK, so ladies and gentlemen, let's go. I can't. For some reason, I cannot zoom in. What is happening here? Because my fingers are numb. There we go. My bad. All right, so the very first thing that we see is the negative sign. So the very first thing that you write is reflected or it reflects over the x axis. What does that really mean that it opens down? We already knew that. Okay. What's the second thing that we see? After the negative, we see the fraction 1 half. So the second thing on your notes above says it's either going to be a vertical compression or a vertical stretch. Now, if you didn't have a number here, if it was just a negative sign, you wouldn't mention vertical stretch or compression. But right here you have a, a 1 half. So what are we going to say? Vertical compression. by a factor of one half. You always write that, by a factor of one half or by a factor of one fourth. Whatever your fraction is, you write it right there. You say, by a factor of that fraction. And last but not least, it's, it's got to move, or in this case, it does move either left, right, up, or down. So it moves how? It shifts. That's the key word that we use. Shifts what? Three units to the left and four units up. We put both of those shifts together. And that's it. That's as hard as it gets, right? And, and that even allows you to, if you had like some multiple choice parabolas, you'd be able to see which one opens down, which one's kind of wider, and which one has a vertex negative three, positive four. And most of the time, you'll be able to select the right graph without even graphing just by knowing how to uh, describe the transformations. Pretty cool, right? Anyway, uh, you have all of this stuff on Google Classroom. You have your answers there. Um, I hope that this uh, little uh, mini lesson slash examples of each of these uh, worksheets helps you. Please ask me for help if you need it. And we do have a test on all of chapter two this Friday. Okay. And I'm working on a practice test. So you guys should have that soon.